Yo, yo, yo. Y'all know what this is, man. This is It's Gorgeous Radio. I'm your boy, Skinny Man. I am here with Fabio Ochoa. A.K.A. Mr. What's Wrong With Him. Come on, man. Hey, big shout out to our sponsors, man. Um, make sure y'all go get y'all some exotic pop. Make sure Brad Winner Kane is on the front. Um, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this. Um, first off, where are you from? I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland. Yeah. How long you been in Vegas? Um, just visiting? a couple of days. Oh, so you only here to visit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dope, dope, man. Okay, come right in and get everything going on. That's oh, yeah. dope. Okay, so coming up in Cleveland, how was it? What's the music scene like? Um, it's rough. It's rough. It's hard. You know what I'm saying? It's like mm. it's like pulling teeth, you know. It, I mean? With the music, yeah. I mean, you know, you it ain't really a lot of opportunities. Okay. Yeah, out there. So uh, you know me, I branch around, I move around. So I went to Atlanta, moved around in there, went to uh, California, okay, moved around in there, Florida, moved around in there. Just, so you got around. Yeah, I just moved around. I got family in Atlanta and deep rooted in there and then you know i just moved around met people and that's how that came about it's crazy because you would think with the the mark that cleveland have made on hip-hop that it would be easier but what you're saying do kind of make sense bone did come to la majority of the people that did make it out of cleveland yeah it's found like, they space somewhere else it's like there they just uh they follow whatever wave that's going on they don't try to break no new artists or nothing like that. They can know that you hot and right. you know you can get slots and perform, but they don't consistently play you and keep mm. like that, you know. Sound like Vegas. Yeah. Sound like Vegas. We go yeah. through the same thing. Yeah. We go through the same thing. So uh are you currently standing uh Cleveland right? I know you said you move around, so where are you currently no, standing I, at now? No, I live in Florida, but okay. I still be back in Cleveland too. I got a home in Cleveland too. Okay. So we just moved back and forth, me and my little brother. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. That's dope. Um, what part of Florida? Clearwater. How you like Florida? Um, I love it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, Clearwater. Why was that? Why was that? I've never heard of that. Why was that a location? Uh, where's well, cl well, close to Tampa? It's close to there. Okay. And, like close to St. Peter's, around in them areas like that. It ain't that really that far, but it's a lot of older people that stay there that's retired and it's real nice there. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's away from the the, the No, I was just really really I went there because when I years ago I went to Miami and I was at a music conference and I got and I got picked and I became a ghostwriter. A lot of people don't know I was a ghostwriter for like major artists. They made me sign okay. a non disclosure where I couldn't tell who I wrote for, but I was in rooms with people where you know, it would be like five or six of us and they would play a beat and I would write a verse in the hook. And I was doing that, just getting paid money, but I couldn't put my name on, on the actual yeah, product yeah. that worked. But like, like I said, about like two of the artists, three of the artists, they still buzzing right now that, okay. that I have wrote for before. But um, yeah, I don't did a lot of things to get myself in position in this music business. So I know it's a tricky game. Right. Yeah. So, what you saying that being a ghostwriter, um, I'm sure you probably wrote plenty of hits, big hits. You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of people that do the yeah, NBA. Well, I don't, I don't wrote for R&B artists. I don't wrote for rap artists that you, that you might right. look at right now. Um, like I say, you just you basically go in a room with a they play a beat, and they pick what they do is they pick the best part of the hook. Like they might take mm -hmm. part of your hook. And mash it with another guy that's writing with you. Okay. Or they might take your verse and they'll match the they'll match the verses up and be like, well, we're gonna take six bars of Fabio's and we're gonna take the other six from this person or the okay. other eight, or the, it's something like that. And uh that's how they do it. Or they might put a drop in the beat and they might say, Well, come up with something different in this part, right? You know, and then you have to write again to come up with something different. But uh, basically, I did that like from in like 2000 and I want to say 2005. It was when my cousin got out the feds. OK. You know, because I was doing music with my cousin when he when he, when they got out the feds, they was uh, they had a record company. And, and like I say, we went to a music conference in Miami and that's when I had got picked. 
but um, that's dope. But um, that's how my journey started, my evolution. But then I seen how dirty the game was, and I quit doing it. Mm. So my little brother, he was he was watching me rap, and then he became my motivation. I was on some hustling shit. And every day I would pull up in my grandmother's driveway on some hustling shit, just sitting in the driveway, count money. He would get in the car and be like, big bro, listen to this rap. And I would listen to it. I'd be like, damn, this nigga getting cold. So right. I told him, me and my other brother was like, you know, start a record company and boom. And we start funding this record company in 2014. Okay. So we, we was going through a process where we was trying to find the right studio that can record us clear. And we get that. Then we was trying to find videographers. Because like I say, in Cleveland, the videographers, they videos be, to me, not all of them, but some of them be cheese. Okay. Know? So I didn't like, I didn't like how the goddamn, the, 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 it was coming out, but right. you know, I'm just keeping it 100. So we went through that process. We was blowing money. We was blowing thousands of dollars, wasting it. Like we got videos that we had paid for that we never even put out. Cause we just didn't like them, but we had already paid mm. the people. So it was like, we just scrapped all of that. So we just kept revamping, but at the same time, we kept going to the studio. We made sure we kept going to the studio. That's why I got so many songs. I just ain't mm. released them all, you know. So, 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 what's do you plan on releasing something? Or what's the last? Yeah, thing yeah, you yeah, have yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm um. Well, the last thing that I that you see me promoting is like I say, I'm going up, Slurpee. This all the stuff that I just dropped. No heartbeat. Um. Uh, these just songs I dropped, but I'm working on this project called The Legend of Voodoo because where I'm from, okay. everybody called me Voodoo. I'm Voodoo Chuck. And uh, it's a lot of mystery in my name. Like, like it's you no, know, it, you got a lot of people that I grew up, they were scared of me. Uh, like, people in my neighborhood, they just know me. They know me just from hustling and just getting money. And I right. just wanted to shine a light on my real story about my life, you know, just talking about everything from my my mama getting high, my father getting high, uh, just my losses, right. you know, everything, my pain, everything that I've been through. So when people see me, I do funny stuff because I wanted to go a different direction. I'm like, I can get on Instagram and I can show money, but that's what everybody was doing. Right. And so, like I say, my little nephew, he birthed something different in me. And that's how I got into the TikTok because I, I was always scared of iPhones. I was always Damn. scared of iPhones. People don't even know. I only had an iPhone for maybe two years. I would never even be around a phone like this. I would keep it away from me. My brother would tell you. Like, I was I always, still to this day, like, I got a flip phone in my pocket. <laughs> like, like, I'm just different. Like, you know, I, I, don't, I don't like these phones because they can, they can track you in so many different ways. And people don't even know, even when they off, they still can hear you. You know, yeah. they can ping your phone. It's, it's um stingrays and shit like that like i know people that my dudes is gone that's in the feds they don't got knocked with stingrays from in prison and get extra time Damn. and all type of different shit so a lot of people don't be knowing this because they ain't in the life so even though i'm not doing certain things no more i still be scared even talking to people that i know because i know they still into some shit Right, and they can tie me into some just for them just saying something. Oh, conspiracy is real. Yeah, it's it's real. Cause one of, my, one, real. Of, one of my uncle closest friends, he never even sold drugs, man. And just cause he said meet him at the spot, and they was going to a club and took a picture of him in the club. They gave him fifteen years, and this man wasn't even selling no drugs. He was working on the light poles, and he just had nice cars. You know what I'm right. saying? But he wasn't even he wasn't even hustling, wasn't selling no drugs or nothing. Damn, yeah. nah, that's real. Yeah. That's real. So, what do you feel like? I know you say your nephew and stuff. What do you feel like with some of your other inspirations to get involved in music? Um, like right now, it's my brother because he because he because he passed away. Okay, so I got to keep it going. You know, that's the only reason why I really I really keep it going because, like I say, he motivated me back to mess with it. I was really done with it, right? You, you know, but through him. He just inspired me like, dang, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot again. And like okay. I say, in the midst of us building it back up, he passed away. So it's like, you got to keep going. Yeah, got to keep going. But okay. I just learned like different stuff along the way. And I'm like, you know, well, I can make it work. You know what I'm saying? It ain't, you know, right. plus it's my passion anyway. Like 
I know I still do it regardless because even when I was hustling, I would always be in the car just like freestyling and rapping and listening to instrumentals. Right. And that's how I develop it. Like, I don't write nothing down. I just used to ride around while I was hustling and just listen to the beats and come up with the hooks and the verses. And and then I would go to the studio and, and lay it down. But that's, oh, that's what I dope. used to do. Yeah. That's a dope process. I was just going to say, what was your process? That's a dope yeah, process. Yeah, yeah, That's what I used to do. Like, he'll tell you, we would sit in the driveway. We would put on the beat. And I'd just be sitting there. And then I'd come up with something. He'd be like, no, bro, that's hard right there. That's That's it right there. You know, but I learned a lot of different things because I had to it went I went through stages with learning. I studied a rhyming dictionary too. Like a lot of people right. don't know that I was around like when I was around these certain singers and writing, they use this certain singer, I can't say his name, but he used to use a rhyming dictionary and I used to see him with it all the time. And one day we was writing together and I was watching how he was coming up with different rhyme patterns and different words and um uh, that's how I picked up on that. So then when, even when I be coming up with it in my mind, right. I learned how to change certain rhyming words or to speed it up at a certain part. Because when a lot of people rap, they don't know, like you can go two bars and rhyme one way, and then you can find a word that's similar to that word when you get to the to them two right. bars and go four bars with a different rhyming pattern, and then go back to another rhyming pattern and the other four bars, you know. Yeah, K uh, cadence and technique is yeah, big yeah, in yeah. So, so, so that's how you you know, but they they don't tell you that, but I'm just no, not at behind all. the scenes where I don't see it helped me develop something from seeing them do that. So I use it, I start using it instead of using it in R and B music, I start doing that when I write my raps, you know, when, right. I, when I write them in my head, I started like changing the flow pattern, you know. Like in Slurpee, right. you can hear it like Slurpee, I be rapping one way, but then at the end I speed it up. You know right. what I'm saying? I definitely gotta check it out. Like I'm like I, I said to the other artists, um, I'm I'm huge on technique and hip hop. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Because technique, technique is really a big part of hip hop, you know, yeah. like the rock hymns and yeah. all that. They came with the technique yeah. of how to create the rhyme patterns, the schemes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Do a do a dot talk about um repeating words two, three times, yeah. but you don't really catch it. But that's how they stay going fast, yeah. being a fast yeah. rapper. So that's dope. Um, with your different, with learning so much, like you being involved, being next to these big artists, um, and learning what because you said you did get like kind of like I ain't fucking with this. What what message would you give the, the youth? Because you've been around it so long. The youth coming up, like what message would you give them to tell them, like, hey, if you're gonna do it, you might want to try this, or how what's the best way? Mm, I would say have part of, have your business right. Okay. You know, because like some people don't even know how to get the money from the music. This is so, a fact. So, so so what they do is what I notice is they so in a rush to put it on YouTube. Yep. They just want to post it and put it out. So that's what I would tell them. Like I wouldn't say give up, you know what I'm saying? Nothing right. like that. I just feel like you know, when you meet certain, it'd be like the music business is like the streets, but except you can't beat up these people. You can't do nothing. Facts. You can't do something. So you got to accept it how it's coming. You know, uh, that's the only thing that I would say that's, that's, that's different to me. But, okay. uh, so um, before we wrap this up, I do got to ask, the, I do want to ask the question, um, transitioning yeah. from hustling to business mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like you know i come from the hustle world too so i understand it mm -hmm. but what was your transition what was your moment of i'm gonna make this work i'm gonna make this my hustle i'm gonna make this you know what i'm saying or whatever i'm, well, I'm gonna well i had business. i had we had multi hustles like you know we had me and my brothers had a company called twinkle tone company where we were selling selfie socks um <laughs> selfie also, socks. yeah okay. so 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 um yeah, we was basically taking people's faces, they animals or whatever, putting it on the side of socks. Uh, I had a, we had an airbrushing place. My brother who passed away, we was doing all of this, printing up shirts like how you know everybody else would probably do. But so y'all had a lot of talent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had we was doing all of that. See, my brother, he was the brains, and me and my other brother was the money. Me and Guava was the money. Okay. So. It was like he didn't have to do nothing. He didn't have to hustle. He didn't have to do the things we did. 
uh, he was he was he went to school for everything. Like he was just too smart. He knew how to LLCs. He knew about branding. He knew about trademarks. He knew about all of that. So it's like a lot of ideas we had. So when I first became in the transition, and I didn't come outside for like ten months. I was annoyed. Damn. I was annoyed. That I felt like somebody was snitching on me. Right. And really, they was. But what it was, these people, they couldn't get me because I figured it out and I gave away the car I had. Okay. I hurried up and put it in somebody else's name and I knew the people didn't know my real name. So I hurried up and I did that and I just didn't come outside for 10 months. And when I, when I was when I was sitting for this 10 months, I went on like a spiritual journey. Like don't nobody notice I started, you know, reading, I read the Bible in and out, I read the Quran, I read all of these different books and trying to figure out what religion I was going to go with. So I was going yeah. through that stage. And then I went through another stage, like, you know, dang, what am I else to do to make money? And then I created a company called Beloved Spirits of America with my with my little brother that's passed away. Yeah. And I started selling high blood pressure tea and blood sugar tea. That's dope. That's and, dope. Uh, yeah. And uh, what I did was, I reached out to the people who I was buying this tea from because I found out that I was a diabetic and I just called them and I, and I was like, you know, how much did it cost me for 50,000 teas? And um, make a long story short, they told me a gravy price and then I ordered them, had them sent to Amazon and then uh, I started selling them from there and, you know, just to transition start working man that's dope that's yeah. that's a dope ass story to yeah salute to you salute yeah. to you brother so um go ahead and tell the people where to find you follow you and all that good stuff before we get about well it. you can follow me on instagram tiktok f-a-b-i-o-o-c-h-o-a 1981 mr what's wrong with him yeah man Make sure y'all go follow him, man. Check out all his music. Check out everything he got going on, man. Tap in. Tap in. This is his gorgeous radio, man. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. And make sure y'all go get y'all some exotic pop. Let's go.